Yes. Got your detective, um, Pike. Yes. Got your detective, uh, Watch. You're always checking the time. I don't know where my watch is. We gotta find it. Oh, that's the mystery. The case of the missing watch. The case of the missing watch. All right, let's just chill while people come to stream. Wow, I can't believe everyone is 15 minutes late. Wow, that's so rude. It's so rude. We've been waiting and wanting and hoping. Autocorrects to twitch.tv slash, or like gives me that. If I type Todd H, it'll fill it out. But it used to be that I could type in TW and it would give me twitch.tv slash Todd Howard Viva. Tommy full from dinner. These shorts tight for Hello. wearing them. Hi, Ink. Hello. Hello, Mars Bars. My dearest sister. How are you tonight? How's the homework going? Hi, Robbie. Hello, Robbie. Ink, you better tell Cinder to come watch. Cinder is my cousin. Mm. just got assigned an essay, uh, but that means it's not due for a while. Yeah, I can believe that. Due tomorrow? God fucking so. Wow. All right, should we get started? Yeah, we got, we got watchers. We got viewers. Oh. 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 Let's play Phoenix Wright, Ace Attorney, TM, TM. TM, TM. Aw, oh, this guy. Aw, oh, this guy. Yeah, let's play the first turnabout. All right. I've never played an Ace Attorney before. Yeah, I don't know what that is. Is that blood? <gasps> oh, that's a murder weapon. This is so easy. this. Yeah, I've got to find someone to pin this on. We chose Ace Attorney TMTM. <laughs> Hi, Abby. Okay, I solved the case. It's the guy. It's that, the, guy. that guy did it. <laughs> We're such good detectives. Wow, game over. All right, end the stream. <laughs> Boy, am I nervous. Wait, should we put the camera on? Should we figure out where we want to put the camera? Oh, sure. I think top right might work. Yeah, top right. Here. Maybe make it a little bit smaller. My dear, that is the left. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Bika will freak, uh, tell Bika. Get Bika on the stream. Oh, ha hi, Achieve. Woo, I'm glad I made it on time. <laughs> well, I have to say, Phoenix, I'm impressed. Not everyone takes on a murder trial right off the bat like this. It says a lot about you and your client as well. I'm doing a bashful emoji or reaction. Actually, it's because I owe him a favor. A favor? Oh, sorry, oh. I read the line. Actually, it's because I owe him a favor. You mean, you knew the defendant before this case? Yes. 
Actually, I kind of owe my current job to him. <laughs> He's one of the reasons I became an attorney. Well, that's news to me. I want to help. I, I want to help him out in any way I can. That's me. <laughs> I just no. really want to. Oh, sorry. It's me. Sorry. I just really want to help. I owe him that much. It's over. My life, everything, it's all over. Is that your client screaming over there? Yeah, it's him. Death, despair, ugh. I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna die. It sounds like he wants to die. Uh, yeah. <sighs> Who is this? Nick. Hey. Hey there, Larry. <laughs> Dude, I'm so guilty. Tell them I'm guilty. Give me the death sentence. I ain't afraid to die. What? What's wrong, Larry? Oh, it's all over. I, I'm finished. Finished. I can't live in a world without her. I can't. Who... Who took her away from me, Nick? Who did this? Ah, uh, Nick, you gotta tell me. Who took my baby away? Hmm. The person responsible for your girlfriend's death? The newspapers say it was you. My name is Phoenix Wright. Here's the story. The VOD should be up tomorrow. My first case is a fairly simple one because I already saw the flashback of when it yeah. happened. A young woman was killed in her apartment. The guy they arrested was the unlucky sap dating her. Larry Butts. My best friend since grade school. Our school had a saying, when something smells, it's usually the butts. That sucks! That's in the so 23 mean. years I've known him, it's usually been true. He has a knack for getting himself in trouble. One thing I can say, though, it's usually not his fault. He just has terrible luck. But I know better than anyone that he's a good guy at heart. Aw, oh, thanks, Abby, for the host. That, and I own one, which is why I took the case to clear his name. And that's just what I'm going to do. Do, do, do. Do 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 do. Chum chum. Chum Court is now in session for the trial of Mr. Larry Butts. Oh my god, it's Dusk Noir. <laughs> the prosecution is ready, Your Honor. The, um, defense is ready, Your Honor. Ahem. <laughs> Mr. Wright, this is your first trial, is it not? Yes, Your Honor. I'm a, a little nervous. Your conduct during this trial will determine, decide the fate of your client. Murder is a serious charge. For your client's sake, I hope you can control your nerves. Thank... Thank you, Your Honor. Mr. Wright, given the circumstances, I think we should have a test to ascertain your readiness. Yes, Your Honor. Ooh. Hands shaking, I say fading. The test will consist of a few simple questions. Answer them clearly and concisely. Please state the name of the defendant in this case. The defendant? Well, that's Larry Butts, Your Honor. Correct. Just keep your wits about you and you'll do fine. Next question. This is a murder trial. Tell me. What's the victim's name? Phew, I know this one. Glad I read the case report cover to cover so many times. It's... Wait... Uh-oh. No way! No way! I forgot! I'm drawing a total blank here! Phoenix! Phoenix! Are you absolutely sure you're up to this? You don't even know the victim's name? Oh! Oh, the victim! Uh, of course I know the victim's name. I, um, I just forgot. Temporarily. I think 
I feel a migraine coming on. Look, the victim's name is listed in the court record. Just press the R button to check it at any time, okay? Remember to check it often. Do it for me, please. I'm begging you. Mr. Wright, who is the victim in this case? Um, the victim's name is Cindy Stone. Correct. Now, tell me, what was the cause of death? She died because she was... I know, because I saw the flashback. She was... oh, sorry. She was struck once by a blunt object. Correct. You've answered all my questions. I see no reason why we shouldn't proceed. You seem much more relaxed, Mr. Wright. Good for you. Thank you, Your Honor. Because I don't feel relaxed, that's for sure. Well then, first, a question for the prosecution. Mr. Payne? Yes, yeah. Your Honor. Oh, should oh. I? I was thinking I would do it since you're the oh, other. Oh, makes sense. Yes, Your Honor. As Mr. Wright told us, the victim was struck with a blunt object. Would you explain to the court just what that object was? The murder weapon was the statue of the thinker. It was found lying on the floor next to the victim. I see. The court accepts it into evidence. Right. Be sure to pay attention to any evidence added during the trial. That evidence is the only ammunition you have in court. Use the R button to check the court record frequently. Mr. Payne, the prosecution may call its first witness. Makes you think, Nora. The prosecution calls the defendant, Mr. Butts, to the stand. Um, oh, sorry. Um, Chief, what do I do now? Pay attention. You don't want to miss any information that might help your client's case. You'll get your chance to respond to the prosecution later, so be ready. Let's just hope he doesn't say anything unfortunate. Uh-oh, Larry gets excited easily. Oops. This could be bad. Okay, maybe you should be the lawyer. Ahem. <laughs> Mr. The police are coming to arrest Larry oh Butts oh right boy. now. Oh Larry. Oh, we're really into now, oh. Larry. <laughs> Mr. Butts, is it not true that the victim had recently dumped you? Hey, watch it, buddy. We were great together. We were Romeo and Juliet, Cleopatra and Mark Anthony. Um, didn't they all die? I wasn't dumped. She just wasn't taking my phone calls. Or seeing me. Ever. What's it to you, anyway? Mr. Butts, what you describe is generally what we mean by dumped. In fact, she had completely abandoned you and was seeing other men. She had just returned from overseas with one of them the day before the murder. What do you mean, one of them? Lies! All of it! Lies! I don't believe a word of it! Your Honor, the victim's passport. According to this, she was in Paris until the day before she died. Hmm. 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 Indeed. She appears to have returned the day before the murder. Dude. No way. The victim was a model, but she did not have a large income. It appears that she had several... Sugar daddies. Daddies? Sugar? Yes, older men who gave her money and gifts. She took their money and used it to support her lifestyle. Dude! We can clearly see what kind of woman this Miss Stone was. Tell me, Mr. Butts, what do you think of her now? Right. I don't think you want him to answer that question. Yeah, Larry has a way of running his mouth in all the wrong directions. Should I... You got the controller. I do have the controller. We should stop and answer. My client had no idea the victim was seeing other men. That question is irrelevant to this case. Oof! Dude, Nick, what do you mean, irrelevant? That cheatin' she-dog? 
I'm gonna die. I'm just gonna drop dead. Yeah, and when I meet her in the afterlife, I'm gonna get to the bottom of this. Let's continue the trial, shall we? I believe the accused's motive is clear to everyone. Yes, quite. Oh boy, this is so not looking good. Next question. You went to the victim's apartment on the day of the murder, did you not? Well, did you or did you not? <laughs> well, maybe I did and maybe I didn't. Uh-oh. He went. What do I do? Well, he w <laughs> I don't want him to commit perjury. <laughs> I know. Send him a signal. Tell the truth. <laughs> er, yeah, yeah, I was there. I went. Order. Well, Mr. Butts? Dude, chill. She wasn't home, man, so like, I didn't see her. Your Honor, the defendant is lying. Lying? The prosecution would like to call a witness who can prove Mr. Butts is lying. Well, that simplifies matters. Who is your witness? The man who found the victim's body, just before making the gruesome discovery. He saw the defendant fleeing the scene of the crime. Order. Order in the court. Oh my god. Mr. Payne, the prosecution may call its witness. Yes, Your Honor. This is bad. On the day of the murder, my witness was selling newspapers at the victim's building. Please bring Mr. Frank Sawit to the stand. Mr. Sawit, do you sell newspaper subscriptions, is this correct? Oh, oh yes! Newspapers, yes! Mr. Sawit, you may proceed with your testimony. Please tell the court what you saw on the day of the murder. Oh. I was going door to door selling subscriptions when I saw a man fleeing an apartment. I thought he must be in a hurry because he left the door half open behind him. Thinking it strange, I looked inside the apartment. Then I saw her lying there, a woman, not moving, dead! I quailed in fright and found myself unable to go inside. I thought to call the police immediately. However, the phone in her apartment wasn't working. I went to the nearby park and found a public phone. I remember the time exactly, it was 1 o'clock p.m. The man who ran was, without a doubt, the defendant sitting right over there. Wait, didn't the court record say time of death? Phoenix, right? Oh yeah. Larry, why didn't you tell the truth? I can't defend you against a testimony like that. Incidentally, why wasn't the phone in the victim's apartment working? Your Honor, at the time of the murder, there was a blackout in the building. Aren't phones supposed to work during a blackout? Yes, Your Honor. However, some cordless phones do not function normally. The phone that Mr. Samwood used was one of those. Your Honor, I have a record of the blackout for your perusal. Now, Mr. Wright. Yes. Er, y yes, Your Honor? You may begin your cross-examination. Cross-examination, Your Honor? All right, Wright. This is it. The real deal. Uh, uh, what exactly am I supposed to do? Why, you expose the lies in the testimony the witness just gave. Lies? What? He was lying? Your client is innocent, right? Then that witness must have lied in his testimony. Or is it your client really guilty? How do I prove he's not? You hold the key. It's in the evidence. Compare the witness's testimony to the evidence at hand. There's bound to be a contradiction in there. First, find contradictions between the court record and the witness's testimony. 
Then, once you've found the contradicting evidence, present it and rub it in the victim's in the witness's face. Um, okay. Open the court record with the R button, then point out the co contradictions in the testimony. I was going door to door selling subscriptions when I saw a man fleeing an apartment. I thought he must be in a hurry because he left the head door half open behind him. Thinking it strange, I looked inside the apartment. Then I saw her lying there, a woman, not moving, dead. I quailed in fright and found myself unable to go inside. I thought to call the police immediately. However, the phone in her apartment wasn't working. when he says 1 p.m. I went to a nearby park and found a public phone. I remember the time exactly. It was 1 o'clock p.m. Now we hit X on this. Uh. You found the body at 1 p.m. You're sure? Yes, it was 1 o'clock p.m. for certain. Frankly, I find that hard to believe. Your statement directly contradicts the autopsy report. This autopsy notes the time of death at some time after 4 p.m. There was nobody to, er, no body to find at 1 p.m. How do you explain this three hour gap? Oh, that, oh, er. This is trivial, the witness merely forgot the time. After his testimony, I find that hard to believe. Mr. Sawit, why were you so certain that you found the body at 1 o'clock p.m.? I, er, well, I, gee, that's a really good question. Great job, right? Way to put him on the spot. That's all you have to do. Point out contradictions. Lies always beget more lies. See through one, and their whole story falls apart. Honestly, that felt good. Wait, I remember now. Would you care to give it your testimony again? You see, when I found the body, I heard the time. There was a voice saying the time. It was probably coming from the television. Oh, but it was three hours off, wasn't it? I guess the victim must have been watching a video of a taped program. That's why I thought it was 1 o'clock p.m. Terribly sorry about the misunderstanding. Hmm. I see. You heard a voice saying the time on a taped program. Mr. Wright, you may cross-examine the witness. Right. You know what to do. I've got this one. Hmm. You see, when I found the body, I heard the time. There was a voice saying the time. It was probably coming from the television. Was it? Interesting, Mr. Hmm. Solid. Huh. Interesting. Hold it right there. The prosecution has said there was a blackout at the time of the discovery. And this record proves it. You couldn't have heard a television or a video. Gah. <sighs> I, well, ugh. The defense has a point. Do you have an explanation for this, Mr. Sawit? No, I, I find it quite puzzling myself, quite. Robbie, I don't think you understand the purpose of Ace Attorney. Wait, wait, wait. I remember now. Mr. Sawit, the court would prefer to hear an accurate testimony from the very beginning. The constant corrections are harming your credibility. That, and you seem rather distraught. And you're holding your head perfectly still while your entire body shakes. And your toupee keeps coming off. My apologies, Your Honor. It, uh, or, um, it must have been the shock of finding the body. Very well, Mr. Sawit. Let's hear your testimony once more, please. Actually, 
Actually, I didn't hear the time. I saw it. There was a table clock in the apartment, wasn't there? Yeah, the murder weapon. The killer used it to hit the victim. That must have been what I saw. You saw a clock? I guess that would explain it. The defense may cross-examine the witness. Yo, judge, do you not remember what... Never mind. Maybe it's a battery-powered clock. No, no, no. Literally, they're the ones... The prosecution's the one who brought up the murder weapon. As the statue. Mm. Oh, that's right. Maybe it was a statue clock. No, it was of the thinker, remember? Maybe it's got a clock in it. <laughs> See in that, that little panel? <laughs> There was a table clock in the apartment, wasn't there? Objection! 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 Wait just a moment! The murder weapon wasn't a clock. It was a statue. Now how is this supposed to be a clock? You with your objections and your evidence. Just who do you think you are? I'm Phoenix Wright. Just answer the question, Mr. Solid. Hey, I... I saw it there, okay? That's a clock. Your Honor, if I may. Yes, Mr. Payne. As a witness stated, the statue is indeed a clock. The neck is a switch. You just tilt it and it says the time out loud. As it doesn't look like a clock, I submitted it as a statue. My apologies. I see. So, the murder weapon was a table clock after all. Well, Mr. Wright, it appears that the witness's testimony was correct. This is a clock. Do you have any problems with this testimony now? Yeah. Yeah. Your Honor, there is a gaping hole in the witness's testimony. The only way he could have known the weapon was a clock is to hold it in his hand. Yet the witness testified that he never entered the apartment. Clearly a contradiction. Hmm. Indeed. The witness knew it was a clock, because he... You're lying. You were inside the apartment on the day of the murder. <gasps> oh yeah? Prove it. Prove I went in there. I'll do better than that. I can prove you were the one who killed her. You struck her with a clock, and the shock of the blow triggered the clock's voice. That was the sound you heard. Order in the court. Intriguing. Please continue, Mr. Wright. Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Sotlet, the sound must have left quite an impression on you. Understandable, since the murder weapon spoke just as you hit the victim. That voice was burned into your mind. That's why you were so certain about the time. Well, what's the meaning of this? This is all just baseless conjecture. Baseless? Just look at the witness's face. Would the witness care to elaborate? Did you strike the victim with the clock? I, I, that day, I, I never, look, I, the clock, I heard, no, I mean, I saw, oh, ah! Shut up, shut up, shut up, shut up! I hate you! It... It was him, I tell you. I saw him. He... He killed her, and he should burn! Burn! Give him death! Order? Order in the court, I say. Your Honor, uh, a moment, please. There isn't a shred of evidence supporting the defense's claims. Mr. Wright. Your Honor? You claim that the sound from the witness heard came from the clock. Do you have any evidence? The whole case is riding on this. I'd better think it through carefully. Y Your Honor, the sound Mr. Sabat heard was definitely this clock. A fact which is clear if you simply... Try sounding the clock. Let's sound the clock now, here, in this court. Your Honor, may I have the clock? I ask the court to listen very carefully. That certainly is a strange way to announce the time. Well, he is the thinker, after all. So, we've heard the clock. What are your conclusions, Mr. Wright? 
Oh, wait. Oh, yeah, sorry. Mr. Payne, can you tell me what time it is now? It's 11.25. Heck! As you, oh. as you can see, this clock is exactly three hours slow. Precisely the discrepancy between Mr. what Mr. Sawit heard and the actual time of death. So, so oh, Mr. Sorry. Sawit, try to talk your way out of this one. Ha, ha, ha. You forgot one thing. Uh-oh. What's he talking about now? While it may seem like this clock is running three hours slow, it proves nothing. How do you know it was running three hours slow on the day of the murder? If you can't prove that, you don't have a case. He's right. How am I going to prove that? Damn it. I was so close. Mr. Wright, it seems you lack the critical evidence to support your claim. Yes, Your Honor. This means I cannot let you indict the witness. Unfortunately, this ends the cross-examination of Mr. Frank Sawit. I come all the way down here to testify, and look what happens. You treat me like a criminal. A criminal. You lawyers are all slime. <sighs> I almost had him. Sorry, Larry. I failed you. There's nothing I can do about it now. Not so fast, Mr. Solid. Mia! I mean, Chief! Listen up, right? Don't throw this one away. Not like this. Think. But, Chief, it's over. I can't prove the clock was slow the day of the murder. Nobody can prove that. Um, well, yes. But that doesn't mean you can still, can't still win. Try thinking outside of the box. Don't waste time doubting the facts. Assume the clock was three hours slow and think through it. Ask yourself, why was the clock three hours slow? Figure out the reason and you'll have your proof. Right, right? Can you think of a reason as to why the clock would be three hours slow? Did she bring it back from Paris? Paris? That's what I was thinking, the time difference, but I think it would be more than that. It wasn't three hours slow, it was nine hours behind. Nine hours behind. Or nine hours fast. Because, yeah. Maybe I can prove it. You must have the evidence somewhere that can prove it, right? Find it and let them have it. Well, Mr. Wright, you say the clock was already running slow on the day of the murder. Have you found evidence to support this claim? Of course. There is a piece of evidence in the court record that can prove my claim beyond a doubt. Ha! Tough words. Let's see if you pull this one off. Let's see this evidence that proves why the clock was running slow. It's a passport, right? Yeah, that's the only one I haven't used. Take that! Take that! The victim had just returned home from abroad the day before the murder. As we all know, the time difference between here and Paris is nine hours. When it's 4 p.m. here, it's 1 a.m. the next day there. The clock wasn't three hours slow, it was nine hours fast. Oh my god, I literally said that. <laughs> the victim had a reset her clock since returning home. That's why the time you heard when you struck her dead in her apartment was wrong. Proof enough for you, Mr. Sawit? Or should I say, Mr. Did It? Damn. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god. Did he die? <laughs> oh, order. Order, I say. Well, this case has certainly turned out differently than we all expected. Mr. Payne, your witness? He, er, he was arrested and has been taken away, Your Honor. Very well. Mr. Wright? Yes, Your Honor? I have... I have to say, I'm impressed. I don't think I've ever seen someone completely... De uh, someone complete a defense so quickly. And find the true culprit at the same time. Thank you, Your Honor. At this point, this is only a formality, but... This court finds the defendant, Mr. Larry Butts. Not guilty. Not guilty.
And with that, this court is adjourned. Wow, this is a great game. This is amazing. <laughs> Turns out that Frank Sawid was a common burglar. He posed as a newspaper salesman to check and see when people were out of the house. That day, when Larry went to her apartment, the victim wasn't home. After he left, Mr. Sawit let himself in to do his dirty work. While he was searching her place, the victim returned. Flustered, Mr. Sawit grabbed the nearest blunt object he could find. Chong chong. Chong chong. Ooh, I still can't believe we won. Right. Good job in there. Congratulations. Thanks, Chief. I owe it all to you. Not at all, not at all. You fought your own battles in there. It's been a while since I've seen a trial end on such a satisfying note. I've never seen the Chief look this happy. If she is this glad, imagine how Larry must feel. My life is over! Larry, you're supposed to be happy. What's wrong now? Aw, uh, Nick. Don't worry about me. I'll be dead and gone soon. Good. Wait, no! I mean, bad, 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 bad. Larry, you're innocent. The case is closed. But, but, my Cindy Wendy's gone, man. Gone forever. Larry, she was a... Nah, never mind. Congratulations, Harry. H Harry? Yes, you. I can practically see the headlines now. Harry Potts innocent. <laughs> um, thanks. I really owe you one. I won't forget this, ever. Let's celebrate. Dinner, movie, my treat. Oh, no, I couldn't. Hey. I was the one who got you off the hook. Oh, hey! Here, take this. It's a present. A present? For me? Wait, was this the evidence that... Actually, I made this clock for her. I made one for her and one for me. R really? You? You made this? Well, thank you. I'll keep it as a memento. Yo, Nick, can you believe it? I was so into that chick, and, and she was just playing me for a fool. Don't that just make you want to cry? <laughs> Larry. Are you so sure? Uh, excuse me? I think she thought quite a lot of you in her own way. Nah, you don't gotta sympathize with me, it's okay. Oh, I'm not just sympathizing, really. Isn't that right, right? Don't you have something to show your friend? Something that proves how she felt about him? Huh? Oh, yeah, right. What the heck is she talking about? What is she talking about? Well, the statue, because she was still using it. And he made it for Check this out, Larry. Proof positive you weren't just some chump to her. Huh? What about that clock? This is the clock you made for her, Larry. And she took it with her when she traveled. Whatever. She probably just needed a clock, that's all. You think so? It's a pretty heavy clock to take traveling. Well, make of it what you will. Hey, Nick. I'm glad I asked you to be my lawyer. Really, I am. Thanks. Hope that made him feel a little better. Right? I hope you see the importance of evidence now. Also, hopefully you realize things change depending on how you look at them. People, too. We never really know if our clients are guilty or innocent. All we can do is believe in them. And in order to believe in them, you have to believe in yourself. Right? Listen. Learn. Grow strong. Oh, is Mia gonna die? Never let go of what you believe in. Never. Well, I think our work here is done. 
Shall we be off? Yeah, I, I guess so. Say, how about dinner? On me? We'll drink a toast in honor. <laughs> we'll drink a toast to innocent butts. Yeah! Oh, speaking of Harry, you were saying part of why you became a lawyer was because of him. Wait, <laughs> Nora, what happens if you're like, I have proof she cared for you, and then hand her the autopsy or for? <laughs> You'll have to tell me more about it sometime. Maybe over drinks? And so, my first trial came to a close. Harry, Larry slapped me on the back and said, Gee, Nick, it's good to have friends. I'm pretty sure he's not going to pay us. Unless you count the clock he gave me. I didn't know it then. But that clock was soon going to be at the center of another incident. Oh I told you Mia's going to die. My promise to tell the chief about me and Larry would be one promise that I wouldn't be able to keep. I literally oh God. told you. Because she was given like yeah. a sappy, like, yeah. Yeah. never give up yep. speech. Oh. Should we play episode two? Um, let me... I'll be honest. I dressed mm -hmm. up for the stream. Haven't been, you know, wearing pants much. <laughs> but... These shorts don't fit. I have to be back. <laughs> I'm back. I'll be back. Ugh. 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 How's everybody doing? Did you like that case? I did. I liked that too. What was your favorite part? I liked that too. Take a look. It's in a book. Reading rainbow. Wow, that was very edgy. Um, I watched a I watched a like a video essay on on the like animation style, uh, which is what made me like. Hmm, I should play Ace Attorney. You know what I'm saying? All the little, all their little ticks. Like they don't do a lot of they don't really do that much animation, but. <gasps> You know what I'm saying? What? They don't do that much animation, but it, in what? In Ace Attorney. Oh, but, oh, oh, oh. But it feels like it feels very animated. Yeah, you know. Yeah. Because it's very like they just do like character expressions. Mm -hmm. It's like how the reactions are mm -hmm. like the best part of Animal Crossing. Yeah. Well, not the best part, but like the mm -hmm. best way to interact with the other mm -hmm. villagers because they have like, like, each reaction does such a clear mm -hmm. thing. Um. Like the 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 witness that we cross examined only had like only had like a dozen JPEGs. Yeah. You know, and he just did them faster or slower. All right. Sorry, I just wanted to catch up on the chat. Okay, I'm gonna refill this water bottle. Oh, that would be great. Yeah. <sighs> Hello everyone, I'm back, and I'm no longer wearing denim, so I'm feeling great. <laughs> I just shouldn't fucking ever wear denim during quarantine. I'm never leaving this house. Oh yeah, do you want to play this one? Oh, can I? Yeah. I'm playing this uh, on Switch. It, yeah. was... It, was, it was $15 for the trilogy. I don't know if it's still on sale. Oh, sorry. Uh, saving. Yes. Yeah. Well, it didn't it just. I don't know. No. <laughs> yes, <laughs> Nora. Do we have the same water bottle? <laughs> um. Yeah. <laughs> let's both influence her hands. <laughs> influence her hands. This is um the Simple Minds water bottle from Target. I like it better than my last water bottle because my last water bottle had a straw and um, uh, 
the straw got moldy and I didn't mm-hmm. like it. But this is just a bottle, so it's fine. Uh, I mean, if you want to buy it, we'll probably play through the whole thing. Yeah, we'll probably play honest. through the whole thing because it's fine. <laughs> and it's a visual novel, so there's not like, you know. Oh my god, Nora. Wait, hold on. I'm going to go to the bathroom real fast and check if it's a Nora I see in the mirror. Oh my god. <laughs> Yo, and this is such a pretty, cause like this, this bottle is trans rights, mm-hmm. so we got it because yeah. it it is pink to blue. Oh, also I got Octo expansion, so I've been playing that, mm. and I got the the Civ expansion, so I've been playing those. Mm. One of these days I'll stream Civ. <gasps> Maybe oh tomorrow I'll oh stream God. starting a Maori game. Because I really want to do that. You, you'll be streaming all day. Um, no comment. I love Civ so fucking much. Okay, I... If you have it on Switch, I can play with you. But also I don't want to play with you because I'm bad at the game. <laughs> I just play on the easiest difficulty and then get excited when I'm winning. That's not true. I play on the second easiest difficulty. Yo, the text in Civ is outrageously bad. It's outrageously small. Um, okay, but also we should play this what was game. That, what mm-hmm. was that game that we tried streaming, like, weeks ago? And Frostpunk. Frostpunk. Oh, Frostpunk, yeah. And I, so I, I didn't read a word of it. Fucking small. Oh, yeah. No, the contrast is awful. The text is bad. Um, <laughs> no, no worries. Uh, I have Civ 5 on my Mac, but also I think my Mac would just explode if I tried to run it. Um, so. Ooh, I know Maya. I used to roleplay with a lot of people who played Maya on LiveJournal and Dream with RP oh forums. God. People really liked her. Hey Maya, it's me. Mia, what's up? You haven't called in a while. Hey sisters. Sorry, I've I've been so busy. How have you been? Well, lonely, and it's all your fault. Nah, I'm just teasing. I've been great. I'm finally getting used to having my own place. That's good to hear. Actually, I'm calling because I have a favor to ask. I know, I know. You want me to hold evidence for you? Sharp as always. There's a lot of buzz about the upcoming trial. I just don't feel safe keeping the evidence here. I gotcha. So, what is it this time? It's a clock. A clock? Yeah, it's made to look like that statue, the thinker. And it tells you the time. I thought you might like it. You've always liked toys. Hey, I'm not a little girl anymore, sis. Now, now. You know I'm only teasing. I knew they were sisters. I know. Of course they're sisters. Me they're and Maya. Ah, uh, I should probably... <gasps> Just Mir and Mars. Oh my god. Oh my god. Ah, uh, I should probably tell you, the clock isn't talking right now. Huh? It's not working? That's lame. I had to take the clock work out. Sorry. I put some papers inside instead. Papers? Is that the evidence then? Yo, Nora, you're not wrong. Um, my mom was so against naming um, <laughs> uh, naming my sister and I anything remotely similar. And now we've decided to go by Mir and Mars. Uh, this one wasn't the murder weapon clock. This is the the, the dupe that that Larry that, that Larry gave her. Yeah. Can you come by the office tonight? Say nine o'clock to pick it up. I'll be in a pre-trial meeting until then. Okay, sis, but I expect dinner. Something good. Like burgers. I could really go for a good burger. You know what? You're not wrong. Okay, okay. We'll hit the usual joint. All right, it's a deal. Okay, sis, see you soon. Yep, I'll be waiting, Maya. Oh my god. Whoa. Burger. It makes sense that the tutorial person would die in the second one. 
Yeah. I'm sorry, but I can't give you what I don't have. Oh, he's the one who recorded the call. How could you know? Oh, you are not cogniferous of my background. Is that a word? Gathering information is my business, you see. I... I should have been more careful. Ho, ho. My dear Miss Faye, I'm so very sorry. Oh, my... But I'm afraid I must ask you for one more thing. Your life. Your eternal silence. Farewell, Miss Faye. Oh my. Oh! Now both of them are murder weapons. Who's? Oh boy. Is this Joe Taro? <laughs> Uh-oh, I'm late. Huh, that's strange. I guess the chief left without me. She said her sister was coming over, so we should all go out for dinner. What's that smell? Blood? Mia! Maybe she's in her office. Oh! I smell blood. And that can't be good. I have to check and see if Mia... The chief's okay. Press X for plus for uh, or B to go back. Yeah. That smell, blood. <gasps> oh, <gasps> sis. sis. Oh, yeah. someone's there. Just don't know. I hope she wore a brace. <laughs> I hope her she didn't have too many spinal issues. <laughs> oh, the dot dot exclamation point is just like it's Phoenix staring and it is mine. It's the wolf, the cartoon wolf with the eyes going wide, going oh my oh god. god. Oh my god. <laughs> <Ooh -hoo -hoo. laughs> Chief! I'm sorry, this is an emotional moment. <laughs> oh man. It's just not. Mm, there are just not big balls on your chest. That's all I'm gonna say. Whoever drew it, that's all I'm gonna say. <laughs> oh god. <laughs> Who are you? <laughs> oh, you should be Maya yeah, or I Phoenix. Should, I will. I'll be Maya. Yeah. All right. She be just Phoenix. faint. Do your, be I'll, do your I'll, best I'll, noir voice. Okay. Yeah. The strange girl dropped out cold. I left her lying on the office sofa. I went back to the chief where she lay under the window. Her body was still warm. I could feel it when I held her shoulder. <laughs> Sorry, the way the light, yeah. the way the light is just two circles on the two bigger circles is really, really, really fucking with me. Then, then all too quickly, it began to fade. Until finally she was cold. And then, like, her boobs are so thick, but then her thighs are, like, dummy thin. <laughs> like, make it make sense. Chapter 
cheap. It's encrusted with dried blood. How ironic that this became the word murder weapon. Again. Again. Chief, it's hard seeing her like this. But if there are any clues here... She was struck on the head with a blunt object. She probably died instantly. The thinker lying next to her must have been the murder weapon. Hmm. There's some glass shards near the chief's body. Must be pieces of the glass from the light stand lying broken on the back of the room. Sorry, I'm a good influence, I promise. <laughs> Nothing else that seems like a clue here. Hmm. A piece of paper. It must have fallen from Mia's hand. What could it be? <laughs> oh my god. Please, play the game. Okay, I'm sorry, I'm done, I'm done, I'm done. A word is written in blood on this scrap of paper. Maya? Did Mia write this? This piece of paper is a receipt from a department store, dated today. Yesterday. <laughs> Sorry, yesterday. yesterday. I think that's enough snooping around for now. I'd better call the police and find out what that girl was doing. What was that girl doing here? Can I go over, like, here? Probably look at the one Well, just because... I think, I think that's it. I think we have to go back. Oh, there. There, there, there. And then I can... Right. I better call the police. Huh? That's funny. A few of the screws on the receiver are missing. It looks like someone was halfway through taking it apart. Police? Oh, it's you. What was that? Someone screaming from outside the window? Yeah, this being is gonna represent himself. She's staring right at me. She's holding a phone in her hand. Oh, you caught a weedle. What should I name it? Mew bait. I so I traded my first weedle in Fire Red for a Mew at Tarje. What's uh what's in the schedule of the book? perfectly normal office desk. The chief had a very particular policy about office decor. Spend big on stuff the clients use, but keep your but keep your own stuff simple. The Fane Co. Ledger Board. Everything is written in the chief's ultra neat handwriting. It's a small office, but it makes a good bit of money. she used was this, P this PC for was email. She picked this, she picked up this ancient model at some garage sale for practically nothing. The chief's chair, a simple, functional design. Felt, feels pretty good to sit in, too. Is he just, she's like dead and he's just like testing out the chair? Like, oh, oh, it's nice. Good amount of sink. Good amount of bounce. Luxurious place. I Where nothing see. ever happens sketchy like there. Also, yes, Robbie, I've seen that when it first appeared in Tumblr many years ago. Many moons ago. I was a different person. Oh, oh. files. All the chief's important documents are packed in here. 
This is where she filed her case records and recent rulings. This feels like Nancy Drew, but somehow with a better UI. Uh, that, I, I don't know, I wouldn't expect, like, I'd expect something on the PC to have a better, like, point-and-click uh, objects UI than, like, where you have a mouse. Alright, switch. That's about all you got. That girl just now. Where'd she go? I put her right <laughs> no, there on the sofa. <laughs> Love to tap wire from Gatewater. Uh-oh. I hope she didn't run on me. Yipes! Don't scare me like that. Um... Excuse me, but who are you? It's okay. I work here. Maya... Maya Faye. Maya... Faye? Maya... So Mia was writing this girl's name. Maybe I should show her the receipt. I never thought there'd be use for evidence like this outside the courtroom. Before Mia died, she wrote a message with her own blood. She wrote it on the back of this receipt. Th that's my name! Well, why? Why would she write my name? Please, Please just... Just calm down. Just write my name. Uh, uh oh. Now I've done it. <gasps> the police! It sounds like they're coming this way. Freeze! Police! Oh, oh Dick this guy. Grayson! Oh. <laughs> uh, do you want to be gumshoe or shy? Alright, I'm Detective Dick Gumshoe, see? He does not look like that voice. <laughs> You can be him if you want. Gumshoe, what an odd name. We received a report from the building across the way, see? Wait, can we trade off Wait. voices for him? Yeah, yeah. Until we okay. find it. What what should he be? We received the report from the we building received... across the way. That's what see? I was thinking. That was what I was thinking. We received a report from the building across the way, see? Got a voice in saying they saw a moida. It must have been that woman I saw. Anyway, I uh, don't want either of you moving one inch, okay? Great. Just great. Do you want to do a Phoenix? Now that... Nah, I'll be back. Okay. Yeah. Maya, wait. She wouldn't have... Nah. <laughs> Every Let's Play of this I've seen gives him a Boston accent. Whoa. Excuse me. Does Void Maya mean anything to you? Um, that... That's my name. What? <laughs> what? The victim drew this here note in her blood, see? With a drying breath, she wrote down the killer's name. Ink, we can see you playing Splatoon. <laughs> You're blasted <laughs> on stream for everyone to see. K killer? Case thought... closed. You're coming down to the precinct, ma'am. What? Mia's younger sister, Maya, was arrested on the spot. I was taken in for questioning and didn't get out until the next morning. My eyes were heavy, but I couldn't sleep. I sat around, waiting for visiting hours to begin at the detention center. I had to talk to Maya as soon as possible. Wow. They have poor Maya locked up like a criminal. Oh! It's you, the lawyer. Good morning. Good morning. She looks so tired. Um, are you going to be my attorney? Well, that's what I wanted to talk to you about. Of course not. Well, it's up to her. Legally. 
I'd better give it to her straight. It's up to you. Up to me? Yes. I don't think this is something I should decide. After all, you're the one in trouble here. They're never going to believe me, are they? Even you, when you found me in the office. You looked at me like I had done it. Did I look at her like that? No, no, I never thought. It, it's okay. I understand. And I've also heard about you. I heard? I heard what about me? I was talking to my sister on the phone the other day. Today is my junior partner's first time in court. Wow, really? How'd that go? It was quite the scene. Honestly, I was on the edge. I was on edge the whole time. It's been a while. Ha huh. Oh, sorry. So he crashed and burned? He's a genius. One of those strike fear in the hearts of evil types. The only thing he's lacking is experience. Huh. Sounds like it was fun. Well, I know who to go to if I ever get in trouble now. I don't know, Maya. I think you might want to wait. Give him three more years. That is, unless you want to be found guilty. Damn. Damn. That's what she said. Uh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to insult you. No, it's okay. It's true, I guess. But at the same time, I just can't sit by and watch. When I think of the person who did this to Mia... I know. This guard monitors the visitor's room. He hasn't moved an inch. Real pro, this guy. Smile for the camera. Tell me about the day of the murder. Yes! Let's see. That morning, I got a call from my sister. She wanted me to hold on to a piece of evidence for an upcoming trial. Evidence? Yes. That clock shaped like the thinker. Who? <laughs> the one Larry made. How could that have been evidence in a case? Um, right. She said something about that. I remember! Do you want to hear it in her own voice? Her own voice? Yes. I'm pretty sure our conversation is on my cell phone. You recorded it? Yeah. I forgot how to delete those things. <coughs> Bless you. Sorry. Yeah, Phoenix, tell us if it's Phoenix, comfy. Phoenix Wright chair attorney. There's something I've been wanting to ask you. Yes? What's with that outfit? Oh, this? This is what all acolytes wear. It's my uniform, you could say. She had a cult. Acolytes? Like people in religious training? What is it you do? Oh, it's nothing strange, really. I'm a spirit medium. In training. A, a spirit medium? I'm pretty sure that qualifies as strange. So, you say you have a conversation with your sister on your cell phone. Let's hear it. Right! Oh! I just remembered. That detective took my cell phone. Sorry. Oh, right. Of course. Next time I see D Detective Gumshoe, I'll ask him for it. I'll write you a note so you don't forget, okay? Sure, thanks. So, you're an acolyte, and are a uh, medium in training. That's right! <laughs> oh my god. What? She's a small, medium, and large. <sighs> Gotta love those small, mediums at large. <laughs> Especially the women have always been very sensitive to the spirit world. 
Wait a second. You said the Fey family? So, Mia was into this stuff too. Of course. She left the mountain to follow her career, she said. Her powers were first class too. I, I have no idea. Do you want to call it after this conversation, maybe? No, we can keep going. Can you keep going? I'm also getting a little snoozy, that's oh. why I asked. So, I, I have work hmm. in the morning. <sighs> Wait. What? So, you're a real, honest-to-goodness spirit medium. With ESP and all that? Yes. In training. Uh, I, you could also note, Nora, that she's also not yet a medium. <laughs> And she's not that small. That's true. Well, can't you contact Maya's spirit, then? We can just ask her who killed her. I... Let the record show. She's a medium medium in medium. <laughs> in training, in training. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm still in training. <laughs> do something like that on that level like that hmm. I thought that would be too easy um huh? something to matter um I was wondering could I ask you a favor hmm? this is the address of a famous lawyer oh my, God. my sister gave me this a long time ago she said if I was ever in trouble I should call him and well I'm in trouble you could go ask him to represent me. Oh, is this Miles Edgeworth? Oh my god. Wait, is that Tails' name? <laughs> wait, oh wait. Oh my god. Is it Tails' name, Miles oh Edgeworth? <laughs> What's the guy's name in this? <laughs> okay, no, Miles Edgeworth is the guy in this. Oh my god, he looks so gay. What is Tails' name? <laughs> Miles per hour! Miles per hour! No, but I knew Tails' name was Miles. I know Tails' name is Miles because I was a Tails main in Mario and Sonic at the Olympic Games. That's right. Beijing 2008. The mind holds on to things it needs to keep close. <laughs> Nora knew it so immediately, too. I d couldn't even type in Tails' a real name, Sonic, into Google. Hmm. Sure, why not? I'll go ask. Thank you so much! I have no one else to turn to. Say, what about your parents? I see. Don't worry. Leave it to me. Thank you. The trial's tomorrow. At ten. What? Tomorrow? Tomorrow. What if this guy refuses? They told me that if I don't find one, the state will pick an attorney to defend me. <laughs> when will that happen? They're giving me until four o'clock this afternoon. And visiting hours are almost up. I'd better hurry. Ink, I, I've known what Miles looks like for fucking years. I've been on the internet. You think I was on, uh, the... OMG! Um, uh, oh my god. I'm forgetting all of their names. OMG, Benedict Cumberbatch! OMG, Sherlock is so gay! Side of Tumblr in 2012, and you think I've never seen Phoenix and Miles fan art? I just reminded myself what he looked like. Yeah. I've always known. <laughs> he looks like a fucking... Uh, <laughs> what are they called? A fucking Dracula. He looks like a Dracula gone nice. <laughs> he looks like alternate universe humor. <laughs> Tell me about the day of the murder. 
Sorry, I know it must be hard. No, it's okay. All I've been doing the last few hours is talking about it. I've kind of gotten used to it. Let's see. That morning I got a call from my sister. She wanted me to hold on to a piece of evidence for an upcoming trial. That's the finger clock the player made. It practically qualifies to serial murder now. So then, when did you arrive at the office? It was right around nine. The lights were off and I could smell blood. Then I found her, my sister. I'm averting my eyes out of respect. Thanks, Maya. That's all I need to hear for now. Show her your badge. So she knows you're a real attorney. Sorry, I've never seen that before. <laughs> okay, well, she, didn't, she wouldn't know anyways. Receptionist. The big boss is out. Does that mean he's gay? She couldn't say when he'd be back. It must be hard for her to keep track of everyone, everything when you're a famous lawyer. Ah, so he's out, but maybe Miles will take the case in, in his stead. Not to mention a run of, uh, not to mention run an office like this. I guess I'll just have to come back later. Let me just take a look, see around. That painting has been bugging me ever since I stepped in here. The oil paint is so thick it's practically giving me a stuffed nose. Ooh, Phoenix said I Art minored in art history. I'm sure the prize is nothing to be to sneeze at, for that matter. The price. A table for clients. Hmm. An elegant ebony case, if I'm not mistaken. That lighter's made of stolid gold. Even I can tell someone here's got money to burn. Solid mahogany desk. The wood's been polished to a deep luster. Expensive looking mahogany bookshelves, filled with expensive looking books. Hmm, funny. They don't look like they've ever been read. I can't believe he didn't tell us about the chair! Am I missing anything? I don't hmm. think so. Oh. An expensive potted plant. No idea what kind of plant it is, but it's probably the most expensive one available. Oh, the Maya. tasteful thickness of it. My god, it's even got a watermark. <laughs> this guy ain't shit, Maya. The office is filled with police officers. They're all busily searching for clues. Hey! Oh, this is him. Hey, you there. This is a crime scene, pal. No trespassing. Uh, sorry. Don't I know you from somewhere? Wait, you're that butts guy, aren't you? No, no. no. Oh, no, no, no. You can, you can take this. No, no. I'm not talking to myself. Phoenix Wright. How could anyone mistake me for Larry? Uh, I guess I got the name wrong, Mr. Wright. Sorry about that. That, uh, Butts guy, he was a killer. And you're no killer, right? He was proven innocent. Um, right. And you were... <laughs> um, Gumshoe, wasn't it? Dick Gumshoe? <clears throat> right, they're at your service. Hang on, that's Detective Gumshoe to you, pal. Anyway, uh, get the name right. And uh, don't go call me Dick. Hey, Dick, get over here. Y yes, sir. B be right there. Uh, you're a lawyer, right, pal? If you got business here, you better do it quick. Whew, he thinks I'm Maya's lawyer. An old movie poster. Apparently, this was the first movie that made Maya cry, Mia cry when she saw it. I'll have to check it out one of these days. Mia's favorite potted plant. 
I remember it had this bizarre name no one ever could ever remember. Cordyline Strict, the pal. Who is that? Who was that? I don't know. The sky is blue, so am I. There's that hotel right across the way. Oh, hi, Bika. Mia's desk. Perfectly, perfectly clean, as always. The only thing it's missing is... Mia. Mia. Oh, Mia. Mia, Mia. Oh, Mia. Mia, Mia. There's a horrendous amount of legal books here. The scary still is that Mia probably read all these. Mia, Mia, Mia. Oh my god. No, she's Mia, because she's missing in action. Damn. Book scaly. About Miss Faye, did you do an autopsy? Mm hmm? You want to know what results, huh? Now, nah, don't you look at me like that, pal. It's no use. She might have been your boss, but that doesn't mean you get any special treatment. All right, all right. You can see the report, but that's all. Um, about Maya. Yeah, I'm looking forward to the trial, huh? Sorry, pal. This is one trial you ain't gonna win. Why do you say that? City's prosecutor Edgeworth done a prosecution. Oh, damn. Oh, damn. Oh. Oh, you're gonna be into this. Oh. <laughs> oh. Oh. <laughs> oh. Oh my god. Oh, uh, okay. Okay. Trey's little fanfic brain is rubbing his hands together. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. I'm sure you know what that means, being a lawyer and all. It's Prosecutor Edgeworth. That's right, pal. Mr. Miles Edgeworth himself. Wait. You do know him, don't you? <laughs> oh my god, ink mistake! <laughs> well, you'll see. I know him. He's a feared prosecutor. He doesn't feel pain. He doesn't feel remorse. He won't stop until he gets his guilty verdict. Oh, don't talk about him that way. You make him barely sound human. Miles Tails, Edward. <laughs> Still, I'm afraid this uh, pretty much decides the case. Damn, back when I was homophobic, I would have written Miles X OC fanfic. So, Edward's on this one. He hasn't lost a case since he became prosecutor at the incredibly young age of 25. I don't like when characters are younger than me. <laughs> I mean, are, uh, yeah. Of course, there are rumors of back alley deals and forged evidence. All I know for sure is that Edward hates crime with almost an abnormal passion. I never imagined I'd be facing him so soon. Mmm. 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 Okay, sorry. <laughs> I should go tell Mia that that guy wasn't there. Or Maya. What is it? Did you meet the lawyer? Sorry. I haven't seen him yet. I see. I'd better go see if I can find this elite lawyer she's talking about. You know what? I'm gonna go see if I can find a lawyer. She's having a bad enough time. Did she give you his phone number? No. Oh. She just gave you a piece of paper that said, Hey, remember to find this lawyer. 
Oh, we need to talk to Detective about her uh, uh, her cell phone. Anyway. Uh, yeah. <clears throat> oh, that's not an option. Uh, oh, can you present him with the... Oh, the note. Yeah. I was wondering, did you see Maya Faye's cell phone? Oh, that? I have it. Do you think you could give it back? Sure, I mean, uh, wait a second, pal. Tricky lawyer, huh? Uh-oh, he's on to me. Something to matter? Oh, no, it's just... You know, detective. Nope. I know nothing, pal. That cell phone has a lot of numbers on it. Like her boyfriend's. A cell phone holds all a little girl's sweetest and spiciest secrets. Ooh, I feel like a creep. Uh, you're trying to confuse me? Sorry, pal. I already checked all the numbers in memory. Impressive. You're quite the detective. Uh-huh. Oh, here. You can have your phone back. If you were a detective, you would fingerprint the fucking mm. murder weapon. Mm. And you would see that Maya's fingerprints aren't on it. And you're a bad detective. And your nose is the same boob glow <laughs> that Mia's boobs did. There wasn't any suspicious call records in there after all. Seems like you didn't notice the recorded conversation. Maya's cell phone received from Detective Gumshoe. I've asked all the questions I need to. You done, pal? Um, yes. Thank you. I'll be heading out now. Oh, uh, wait. One more thing I wanted to mention to you. I don't suppose you're planning on talking to the witness, huh? Anyway, you'd better not. No influence in the witness with your loyally ways, pal. Sorry. Yeah, Miss April May. <laughs> I'm sorry about this, but I can't tell you anything about her. Well, you just told me her name. Miss May, huh? Rhymes with Faye. Oh ho! Wow. A conspiracy. <laughs> Aha! Uh -huh. You're just trying your loyalty tricks on me now. She's not gonna go outside her room till the trial. So, she's still in the hotel across the way. I guess I should know better, better than to try to get a detective to leak information. You got that right, pal. Time to pay a visit to Miss May. Self. Thank Detective Gumshoe for making my job harder. Yo, my chest genuinely hurts. Gee, this is all like something out of a movie. It's all so exciting, I can hardly contain myself. Ooh, let me go freshen up so I can look the part of the beautiful eyewitness. I pity the lawyer that had to cross examine this one. It's you. Is this a vibe? There's a screwdriver stuck in this drawer. I wonder what's inside. Let's take a look. Hey! Hey! What are you doing? No touching! Oh, so there's a vibe inside the drawer. Vibe check! 
Ooh. So far, that... everyone who's died in this game has been vibe checked to death. That boy. Y you really shouldn't pry around in other people's rooms now. You wouldn't want to make me upset, would you? Upset? I thought she was going to explode for a second there. Everyone in this game... Okay, except for Maya, which shout out Ace Attorney for not making Maya have badonka donkin boobs. Everyone in this game just has balls hanging from their chest. That's not how boobs work. Like, what is happening in this cleavage? Just purely, purely anatomically. I forgot what that word was for a second. Purely anatomically. She's, is she, is she facing us from the side and that's why we get one boob encroaching over the other? I think they just drew the, um, the emoticon. What emoticon? The boobs emoticon. What? Isn't, like, the parentheses period Y? <laughs> oh, 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 I see. <laughs> well, you got a space... Basic. Yeah, there you go. Ink's got it. <laughs> All right. <laughs> should, we, should we continue with the game? I wonder what could be inside the drawer. The late summer sunlight streams through the window. There's the Fay and Co. office buildings, of course. You can see the inside of the room pretty clearly from here. I think it would be a little difficult to recognize the face from this distance, though. A bottle and two glasses are on the table. Somebody must have been staying with it. Ah, a still scene painting. Wait, should that be still life? Whatever. One of those is hanging on the wall. <laughs> the flowers are fake, as expected. I know sunflowers and tulips. That's about the extent of my floral. But well, you've got a lot to say about every potted plant we see. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. What's inside? Chair's comfy. Chair check. Miles has nothing. Er, <laughs> Phoenix has nothing to tell us about these chairs. Do you think you could tell me something? I need you to describe what you observed at the time of the incident. Ooh, absurd incident. You sound just like a lawyer in the movies. I like a man with a big vocabulary. Better not encourage Or, you know that thing that occur, um, happened the other day? The bad, bad thing? What did you see when it happened? I don't suppose you could tell me about it. Pretty please? Let me see. Um, well, dream on! If you want to know, you'll just have to come to court tomorrow, Mr. Lawyer. Could you just... Who exactly are you? Ooh, Mr. Lawyer. Are you hitting on me? Mm, no. Hey, I'm just doing my job here. Tee, you know, you're cute when you blush. Believe me, this is the first time in my life I've blushed this much. Um, <laughs> right. Can you just tell me what it is you do? Well, no, Tee. You had your little hopes up, didn't you? Oh boy. Oh my god, this voice is killing me. I see there that there are two glasses on the table. Is someone staying here with you? 
Ooh, what amazing powers of observation. You must be one of those famous detectives, like on television. Oh, no, not me. I'm, er, just a lawyer. Say, Mr. Big Detective, why don't you go look for clues in the garbage? Miss hmm? May doesn't like noisy little lawyers. <laughs> Nora, that's me, TVH. sister told me. White. Hmm. Here, do you want to give her a call? Oh. Everyone? Oh, oh, whoops, whoops. I... Hey, I got your cell phone back. Oh, say, can I listen to my sister's voice? listened to every word with such intensity. Before long, tears began to roll down her cheeks. Aww. Thank you. Hmm. Seems like Mr. Grossberg is out. Well, maybe I should just wait here for him to get to come back. Uh -huh. If that wasn't the most over-the-top clearing of the <coughs> road I've ever heard. Aha! Uh -huh. So you're the one they say has been looking for me? Uh, yes, that's me. He looks even grander than I imagined. Mm hmm? That badge on your collar. Ah, so you're a lawyer, are you now? Uh, yes, well, yes. And what do you want? I'm not particularly busy these days. Please, proceed. Not busy? Then 
how come no one could get in touch with you? Hmm? Something the matter? You came to see the one and only Marvin Grossberg. Did you not? Sorry. Uh, you came to see the one and only Marvin Grossberg. Did you not? Well, here I am, boy. What do you want? Out with it. Um, well, s sir, it's actually... It's about Maya. Maya Fey. Ah, yes. Maya Fey. Go on. Hmm? Why the strange reaction? Acha-cha. I'm really quite busy here, son. I can't go taking cases on a day's notice. No, it's quite impossible. Wait a second. How did you know the trial was tomorrow? <clears throat> anyway, I'm afraid it's entirely impossible for me to represent her. Sorry. End of discussion. What's going on? He refused me before I even got a chance to ask him. What do I tell Maya? How can you just refuse like that? Please, tell me why you won't take the case. Oh, Abby, thank you for the bits. Thank you, Abby. Huh? Uh, ahem. Well, you see, it's just, I'm busy, you see? But the client is Mia Faye's, Maya, Mia Faye's sister. Mm, uh, Mia trusted you. She knew her sister would be in good hands. Yes, yes, of course. I know that. However, I'm sorry, but I must refuse. Sorry. Goodbye. Creep. Fire. I don't have time to argue with you anyway. I'll go look else elsewhere. <laughs> think not. Huh? Did you say something? I think not, I said. What do you mean? I'm terribly, terribly sorry. But I'm afraid that no lawyer worth their salt will take on this particular case. Terribly sorry, my boy. Why? I... I cannot say. I beg your pardon, but could you leave? Now, I have nothing more to discuss with you. What's going on here? How did you know Mia Fey? She worked here a long time ago. Quite the apprentice, that one. Learned my techniques in the blink of an eye. She left one day, quite suddenly. She had a mission, you see. A mission? You could see it in her eyes. She followed it with a burning passion. Never looked back, that one. <sighs> I'm sorry. No, you're fine. That's quite a painting. Aha! You noticed. It's my pride and joy. Impressive, isn't it? Well, isn't it? The color of the sky, the hue of the sea, the weave of the straw hat. It's worth at least three million. I have no intention of parting with it, of course. No, I won't sell it. Not even to you. I wasn't interested. It's not for sale. I'm not. I'm not buying. Jeez. Well, should we let Maya know that? Let's let Maya know, and then it will be her lawyer. Yeah. Hi. Maya. Oh, you're back. Did you find the lawyer? Um. Well, what do I tell her? Well, see, just be honest. I, I really don't think you should use that guy. He, he didn't seem healthy. He was all skin and bones. What really happened? You don't mean he refused to help? Um. I see. I've been abandoned, then. Just a little longer now before the state-appointed lawyer comes, I guess. 4 p.m. Time's up. What should I do? Do I just leave her and go home? No. No! I've made up my mind. Oh, the inspiring music. 
I'm going to defend you whether you want me to or not. Why? 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 Well... No one is as sad as a person without any friends. I know. I've been there. A long time ago. Why did I become a lawyer in the first place? Because someone has to look out for the people who have no one on their side. Oh, Phoenix! Maya, I won't abandon you. You can count on me. If you say go home, it's probably like, I'm gonna go home. And then his inner mom likes like, what? No! I can't do that. I can't do that. That's so kind of you. Well, let's fight this one and get you out of here. Right, thank you. She looks like an entirely different person. One last question. You are innocent, right? <laughs> right in, in front of the guard and the camera. Oh my god. I can't believe we got this star entire Earth wound. LP. Yes! And I trust you. So you trust me too, okay? It's a deal. So, what next? There's something that's been bugging me. Just what was inside that strange woman's drawer? It was when I tried to look in that drawer that she got all defensive. There has to be something in there. All right, let's call it for tonight. Let's let's get to the trial. I say. Okay. Yeah. It might take a while. That's all. I know. It seems like we're almost there. <laughs> Can I do this guy? Yeah. Good afternoon, sir. Excuse me, you are... I beg your pardon, sir. I am the bellboy of this establishment at your service, sir. Oh, right. I've just come up to deliver room service, sir. Um, do you know where Miss May might be? Ah, oh, I believe our guest Miss May is currently using the, uh, uh, facilities. If you've no need of anything, I'll be taking my leave. Please, stay as long as you like. Enjoy. Yeah. Wait, no! Hey! Why does it seem like every time I come here, I end up embarrassing myself? Wait, now's my chance to snoop around a bit. Uh, I almost forgot. Yeah! You, you came back quick! Right, I ask you to inform Miss May that there is a message for her. Please tell her that Mr. White of the Blue Corp phoned. Oh, right. Sure. Mr. White of Blue Corp? Where have I heard that name? <gasps> Could it be a coincidence? What do you think? It couldn't be a coincidence. There's not that many people named White out there. The screwdriver sticking out of that half open drawer. Now is my chance to see what's inside. What do we have here? A wiretap? What would a woman like her be doing with a thing like this? There's definitely something suspicious about this Miss May. Why would you have something like this in her hotel room? I love to use air quotes correctly. There's a story behind all this. I know it. All right. I'll be using this bit of evidence in tomorrow's trial. That's for sure. I don't know if that is admissible in court. For Maya's sake, I'll get to this woman's bottom. Wait, I mean, you know what I mean. Oh, bellboy. Still there? Uh-oh. Time to scram. I look forward to tangoing with you tomorrow, Miss May. In court. To be continued. Oh. You were right. I was right. Bika, we are done streaming anyway, so no worries. 
Yeah, we can overwrite, right? Mm -hmm. No. All right. No. No. Bye.